What's up gaming heroes? Welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. My name is Erosium and in today's video we're going to be covering the ultimate guide to making gold in World of Warcraft. Whether you're a seasoned veteran when it comes to gold making or a brand new player there is going to be something in this guide for all of you. This is gonna be an overview of all the various different gold making that you can do in World of Warcraft. So are you ready to make some gold? Let's go. First is first, we gotta get down to the gold making fundamentals. When you're out in the world of Azeroth, you will undoubtedly come across loot. Within this loot, you have trash items, equipable gear, materials, consumables, pets, and mounts. There's so much that you can loot in World of Warcraft, it gets hard to track it all. Now, in order to make gold, you will sell the trash to a vendor, and you will sell the rest to the auction house located in any major city. When these items have been put on the auction house, other players will have an opportunity to purchase them for themselves. This creates an economy in World of Warcraft, and that's exactly how you're gonna make some gold. So now we've covered the very basics of gold making in World of Warcraft, I want to give you one of the most valuable tools that you can use as a player in WoW. This is Trade Skill Master, an add-on, which basically is a database for all World of Warcraft items and their values listed on the auction house. It's so useful, every real gold maker tends to use TSM to keep track of the value of items out there. Now, this isn't a sponsor, this is just generally my opinion, I think you should all get TSM. Link is in the description. Now, the reason so many people use TSM is it tells you the value of items as you're out in the world of Azeroth. So say you kill a random Defias mob and it drops, I don't know, a mask. It will tell you the value of that mask on the auction house as long as it is a sellable piece of equipment. This will give you the most accurate knowledge for figuring out if you're making a lot of gold in a dungeon or figuring out if you made a lot of gold from a random mob that you've just killed in the wilderness. It's so valuable to have this data. Now there is one thing to note before you go ahead and you download and install the TSM add-on, you will need the application that goes along with the add-on, which just keeps it up to date with all the database knowledge of the various prices and how they change. So make sure you go to the link in the description and that will actually give you both the add-on link and the app helper link as well. Now enough about TSM, let's dive into World of Warcraft. Now World of Warcraft is split into regions and realms. Wherever you are located in the world is your region. So for me, I'm in Europe, but some people might be in North America. Some people could be all the way on the other side of the world. Who knows where you are, but it is split into regions. Then it is further split into realms. Now this is really important for everyone to know because auction houses are split based on the realm that you're on. The only exception to this rule is consumables and materials. Consumables and materials are shared across every auction house in your specific region. So I play on EU Silvermoon. If I go to the auction house on EU Silvermoon and I try and sell a material, it will be sold on every single realm in the EU. However, if I go to the auction house and I post a toy on the auction house, that will only be sold on Silver Moon auction house. So just to clarify, materials and consumables are region wide and everything else is realm only. This is really valuable knowledge because it means if you're farming materials and consumables, you'll definitely have more competition and a lot more people to compete with. So the price may be a little bit lower. However, all other items out there, because they're realm specific, you're gonna have less competition and better available prices for you to make good gold. Now, I'm not hating on any particular farm here. I'm simply allowing you guys to understand how the auction house works. Right, so now we all know the fundamentals to gold making in World of Warcraft. Let's dive in to some strategies for gold making in World of Warcraft and how you can use those to make tons of gold. Gathering. Gathering is by far the easiest way to make gold in World of Warcraft. Farming, mining, skinning, herbs, fishing, 
Whatever you're farming, this is a super lucrative way to make gold in World of Warcraft. This effectively allows a player to go out into the world of Azeroth and to farm a specific type of material, then take all that collected material and whack it on the auction house. This is a brilliant way to make a lot of gold purely and simply because all the auction houses are connected you can sell your product pretty quickly. Mining involves gathering ore, gems and stone. Skinning involves slaying beasts and then taking their leather from their corpses. Herbalism involves picking herbs, which can be used in various crafting professions such as alchemy, cooking and inscription. Fishing is the act of finding fishing pools and then fishing all the good fish out of those. Fishers will then go ahead and sell that fish to potential cooks who will cook it into wonderful buffed meals that players will use in high-end content such as PvE, raiding, and PvP. Now, if you're a brand new player and you're just getting started with World of Warcraft, I highly suggest that you start with gathering. This is just so you can get yourself to your initial goal. And I think a really good initial goal is to make anywhere from 10,000 gold to 100,000 gold. And just do that for gathering. Once you've got a bit of gold behind you, you can start to invest that money to make more money. But obviously to get to that point, you need to have some gold behind you. So start with a little bit of gathering and then let's work into some more complicated strategies further down the line. Now do bear in mind that before you go out into the world to do a bunch of gathering, prices can fluctuate and change really, really rapidly. So it's really important that you keep an eye on all of the various different materials out there so that you can make the most amount of gold. For an example, this week I was perusing the auction house and I noticed that iron web spider silk, someone had reset this wonderful material. And because I knew of a specific farm to get iron web spider silk, I was able to quickly go out and farm that material. Now I should probably mention that when a player resets a certain material, this basically means they buy out every single version of that material that they can see on the auction house and they put it back on the auction house at a higher price. So in this instance, this player bought out every single bit of iron web spider silk at, I think it was six gold a piece and they reset the price to 35 gold each. So I was able to quickly go out and farm a hundred of that and whack it back on the auction house and they instantly bought it for 35 gold each. I was in there winner winner chicken dinner. Now do bear in mind that players can use a variety of add-ons such as Gathermate 2 or Roots in order to find where all of the best herbs or fishing, whatever it is you want out there in the world to farm. I would like to take this opportunity to mention that I offer a wide range of farming routes and techniques on my Patreon. Now, I believe my Patreon is one of the best gaming Patreons on the internet. To make things easier for my patrons, I've linked my Patreon to my personal website, erosiumtv.com, where I share four gold making guides every single week for World of Warcraft. So by supporting me on Patreon, you access basically over 130 gold guides right now on my website. On these gold guides, I often give my routes where you can import them directly into your own game and you can get farming the same routes that I personally take to make loads of gold. The second easiest way to make gold in World of Warcraft has just got to be world quests, dailies and weekly activities. Now, one of my favorite ways to make gold is doing world quests. There are some really good world quests in Dragonflight that you can do to make loads of gold. Currently, some of the best world quests are things like the dragon riding, where you quite literally just fly to a point in the map and you say, I want to try this course. And you fly your dragon through large golden hoops. And once you complete the assault course with your dragon, you're rewarded with a bag which will contain around 500 plus gold. Easy gold, simple and easy gold. Very easy to complete. And there's usually about four of these world quests every five days for you to complete on every single character on your account. So say you've got 50 characters, you can literally just log into each character and complete four of those world quests on each of your characters. The easiest gold you'll ever make. That would literally be like 100,000 gold every five days. It's really easy to do and you don't really have to do much at all. That's not even to mention all the extra stuff that you get along with these world quests. So if you're looking for a really easy way to make gold, that's where I would say you could get started. 
Next on my list is a slightly more risky business strategy to make gold, and that is grinding. The following gold making strategy is grinding. You will efficiently grind mobs in a specific area until they drop rare items such as pets, mounts, transmog items, toys, whatever it is that they potentially can drop. These then can be sold on your realm specific auction house to make loads of gold. Now, if you're on a realm where they are potentially lacking a certain stock of items, you can make an absolutely huge amount of gold by grinding and farming these specific items. Pets, transmog gear, mounts, toys, all of it can be farmed from various sources such as rare elites, grinding world mobs, completing quests, dungeons, and even old raids. Some of these pets are rare, and therefore command a bit of a higher price on the auction house. To date, the best item I ever found was worth 1.2 million gold, which in game time, that's actually three to four WoW tokens that you could buy and have the game completely free. By grinding these rare items, which are a bit more risky because it takes longer to sell them and you have to get lucky to find them, you can make an absolute heap of gold but it's worth noting you can't just go out there into the world and farm one item and expect it to sell you really need to just keep it going and have a myriad of items on the auction house listed so that you can make a decent profit so what are transmog items great question my friends transmog items are basically just equipable gear that changes your character's appearance players will go to the auction house and buy transmog gear to give their character a specific look or theme Many people like the pirate transmogs, and many people like cooking transmogs, and many people just want to be something else in the game, so they buy specific gear to make their character look like that. Now, pets are collectible items, which players will go to the auction house to buy, and then use those pets to complete world quests for pet battling, or potentially just battle their friends on World of Warcraft. Mounts are a symbol of prestige for the truly wealthy in World of Warcraft. If you see someone riding along on a really high value mount, everyone does stop and just stare for a second like, how did, how, how did he get that? Who, how did you get so much gold? What? <laughs> it's awesome. Now, I totally understand. I just explained the very basics and I've not actually given you any places to farm. So I'm going to change that and give you a few places that you can get started. For pet farming, check out the link in the description. Uh, it's a completely free guide for you to check out. And it's got a shopping list of various pets that you can farm out in the world of Azeroth. You can farm these from just killing rare elites or potentially grinding mobs in order to get a pet. And then you can literally just sell that on the auction house. Easy peasy. Now it's worth noting, there's a very interesting way that pets work. When you get a pet, you need to right click on that pet and add that to your collection. And then you go over to your collection and you right click on the pet once again and you click put pet in cage and you cage that pet. Once it's caged, it then has a specific value on the auction house where you can sell that item on the auction house. The beauty of doing this means that you can actually go to any auction house on any realm and you can uncage that pet once again to sell on a specific realm. So for example, myself, I play on EU Silvermoon. I could very easily farm my pets on EU Silvermoon and then put it in a cage, create a character on Bladefist EU, and then literally uncage that pet and sell it on Bladefist EU. It's a very unique way that pets work where you can sell it pretty much on any realm, but you have to do it through the cage system. It's really cool and a great way for you to make gold. For mounts, on the other hand, that is a very specific realm sales. So if you are on say EU Silvermoon and you farm a mount such as Golden Mane's Reigns, which is probably worth between 100 to 380,000 gold, you can easily whack that on the auction house and that will eventually sell at around that 300,000 gold mark as long as there isn't too much supply on the auction house. Always check to see how much something is worth before you go out and farm it. Some great mounts for you to start with farming are the Golden Mane's Reigns, the Dune Scavenger, the Crimson Cloud Serpent, and the Chewed On Reigns of the Terrified Pack Mule. Now for transmog items, 
I do want to say with transmogs, it does take a long time to sell transmogs and you do realistically want to have between 200 and 1000 transmogs listed on the auction house before you really start to see regular sales. They do sell, it just takes some time to sell them. So to get started with transmog farming, I would say start yourself in some island expeditions over in BFA. Then if you don't want to do island expeditions, try out some old world dungeons, such as maybe mana tombs. That's a great place to farm transmog and Zolfurak, which is also an amazing place to farm transmog. Transmogs do take a long time to sell, but when they sell, you get a nice chunk of profit. The next strategy for making gold in World of Warcraft is professions and crafting. Now, this is one of my favorite ways to make gold in World of Warcraft. I truly love profession crafting. I, it's just so much fun. It's so simple. You literally stay put in one place and you just craft stuff and stick it on the auction house. How simple is that? So profession crafting is done really simply. Go to an auction house and buy the materials you need to craft something using tailoring, blacksmithing, engineering, whatever profession it is you are using. Then go ahead and sell that item on the auction house for a profit. Always bear in mind that you want to work out how much profit you're going to get from crafting a specific item. So tally up how much the materials are before you go ahead and craft it. I personally love to use TSM to work this out because it does most of the legwork for you. It's a very, very powerful tool that figures out exactly how much everything is. And hey, it's free. Why not? Do bear in mind that getting into profession crafting can initially have some level of expense too, which is why I often say get a bit of gold behind you before you get started with crafting. Now, there are 18 years worth of World of Warcraft expansions out there. So you need to bear in mind that there are 18 years of profession development also out there, which means there's loads, thousands of recipes for your professions. This also means that there's millions of players out there who've got the same profession as you, but many of them won't have all of the rare recipes out there. I highly suggest, as a secret little tip from me right now, go out into World of Warcraft, get the add-on all the things, and farm all of the old world recipes. These often have a very slow sale rate, but they sell for hundreds of thousands of gold. And when players buy them, you're going to make a banging profit because you've got no competition. Hardly anyone goes out there into the world and farms the old recipes. So definitely do it right now. Now, some good professions that work well together are obviously skinning and leatherworking, mining and blacksmithing, mining and engineering, mining and jewelry crafting, herbalism and alchemy, herbalism and inscription, and some kind of odd ones are jewelry crafting and alchemy, and then enchanting and tailoring. The reason that alchemy and jewelry crafting work really well together is if you set yourself up as a transmute master for alchemy, you can actually transmute gems, which will work really well for your jewelry crafting. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, using TSM to do crafting can get really, really complex, especially for new players. So feel free to go out there and look at some of the awesome guides out there on YouTube. I do have some, they are older videos, but they're still completely relevant today because TSM hasn't actually changed very much during the years that it's been out there. It's still a really, really good tool. I do want to let you guys know as well, I actually have a lot of TSM operations over on my Patreon. So if you just want to copy exactly what I'm doing for my tailoring and enchanting and various other professions like that, then you can literally just copy my TSM profile and stick it into your own TSM profile as well. Support me on Patreon to check that out. Next on our list is a really risky one, but is for the brave adventurers out there who have a mind for business. A more advanced goal making strategy is flipping items on the auction house. Flipping items and investing in World of Warcraft can be a really lucrative way to make gold. The basic idea is buying an item for a low price and then selling them back to the auction house for a higher price. To do this, you really want an add-on where you'll be able to tell what the prices of items are, such as TSM, so that you can know whether an item is underpriced, i.e. a region price would be how much that item is worth across all of EU or all of NA, 
For example, we see a mount, the Golden Mains Reigns, listed on the auction house for 75,000 gold. And it's saying that the region value of that item is actually 300,000 gold. That's a really good deal for us to buy. And I've actually done this many times. Go and buy that mount for 75,000 gold and whack it back on the auction house for 300,000 gold. Now do bear in mind that this can be very risky because what happens if that guy who was selling it for 75,000 gold actually has 20 gold domains reigns, they've just posted one. They now post the item for another 75,000 gold. What do you do in that situation? Do you carry on selling it at 300,000 gold? Do you buy another gold domains reigns for 75,000 gold? And then they stick another on. What if they've got 20 of these mounts somehow through some way and they're just trying to sell them all low? You get trapped with a bunch of stock that you can't shift very easily. So this is why it's super, super important. You're very careful with what you buy on the auction house. Now, if I'm getting started with flipping, I would personally start with mounts, pets, transmog items. These are really, really good items to specifically invest in. Just be really, really careful not to over invest in one specific market. It's better to have lots of varying markets that you control that you buy in rather than having one specific item market that, you know, you own a lot of this stock in and then someone comes along and just sticks a bunch of fresh stock in that you're forced to rebuy. Never feel like you're forced into anything. If you need to stick an item in the bank, just stick it in the bank and forget about it. Come back in a month and sell it then. Hopefully you'll have less competition at that point. This actually just reminded me of something. Oh my goodness. I have a bunch of items in the bank from Shadowlands that I stuck in the bank and I forgot about because I bought them when they were cheap and then I'm going to sell them. Now they're probably worth quadruple the price. Now, investing in items, what I just spoke about. I invested in items from a old mechanic in Shadowlands, which is Torghast. And in Torghast, it was basically a dungeon that you went in. It could be a solo or a multiplayer dungeon. And you had a chance of getting things like transmog equipment, pets, things like this. I basically went to the auction house. I bought a whole bunch of various items whilst the content was still fresh and there was too much supply for the demand. I bought it all at a really low price, stuck it in the bank and forgot about it. Now, today, I'm probably going to go back into the game, find those items and then sell them on the auction house. Please bear in mind, this requires a specific amount of capital. You do need a lot of gold to get started in flipping. It can be quite exciting when you do get a sale, though. I will tell you that. Now, next on my list isn't exactly risky. It's highly consistent. However, it can be very slow depending on your strategy. Raw gold farming. Raw gold farming is a slower way to make gold, but it's extremely consistent and it doesn't really require any work with the auction house. So if you're a player who doesn't want to interact with the auction house at all, you just want to make gold from literally going somewhere, killing a bunch of mobs, collecting loot and then selling it to a vendor, this is for you. So you really want to find a place where all of the trash items that you're picking up or any item in general that you're picking up are worth the highest amount of gold possible. This is generally going to give you the most amount of gold that you can make per hour from collecting items and then selling it to a vendor. My advice with this is to do raids. Actually, old raids are really, really good for farming so that you can make loads of gold. I would highly suggest going into the following raids to just farm all of the mobs that you can see and then selling it to a vendor. Try out the Firelands raid in Mount Hygel. Try out the Blackwing Descent in the Burning Steps. Try out Ice Crown Citadel. I do this every Friday. I do this on my stream on twitch.tv slash erosium. Remember to hit that follow and come along every Friday for our weekly mount runs. On those streams, I tend to go through all of the old raids so that I can basically get loads of mounts. But during those raids, I tend to get a lot of raw gold from just slaying bosses and trash within that raid and then selling it to a vendor. You get loads and loads of gold for doing this. I highly suggest giving it a go. Old Jua in Storm Peaks is a great raid for raw gold. And so is Dragon Soul, which is located in Caverns of Time. If you want to get there super easily, go to your local portal room and then take the portal to Caverns of Time 
and then go all the way down until you get to the dragon soul. So that's how you can make raw gold in World of Warcraft. I highly suggest if you've got a spare bit of gold, go to Dalaran and purchase yourself a vendor mount. This will allow you to literally have a vendor wherever you are in the world, just mount up and sell it to your vendor on your mount. The next strategy for gold making isn't one that I personally like to do myself, and it's not really one that a lot of players like in World of Warcraft, and that is service providers. These are boosts and such as that. If you are really good at World of Warcraft and you want to make some gold, you can very easily join the services chat in your local major city and offer services to players out in World of Warcraft, such as boosting them through leveling services. So, you know, you can say, I'll boost you through a bunch of dungeons for this amount of gold per level. Or you could say, I'll boost you through a raid or a specific dungeon to get this specific loot. And this is how much I want to be paid to do that. If you're really good at the game, that can be a great way of making gold as well. Previously, in the past, a lot of people did this for real money, but that is against Blizzard terms of service. So do not do that. Right, now I've gone through all of the various ways to make gold in World of Warcraft. Now I want to just cover a myriad of various different add-ons, explain what they do and how they can help you in-game to make the most amount of gold possible. And that would be World Quest Tracker. This basically just tracks all the world quests on the map and shows them on the left side so that you can see exactly what quests are available to you right now. TSM, obviously TSM is a database which keeps the values of all items up to date and also gives you a bunch of gold making tools so that you can sell various things on the auction house and also create restocking operations for your professions. Rarity allows you to keep track of how many times you farmed a specific item. Say you're farming Golden Mane's Reigns, you would just click on the rarity icon and it would come up with a little on-screen counter and that would show basically how many times you've slain various mobs to try and get Golden Mane's Reigns. This is really useful for those who want to know how many mobs they've killed out in the world in order to try and get a specific mount. Craft Sim is a fantastic add-on which works really, really well for the Dragonflight professions. This works out the average profit that you'll get from crafting items using your Dragonflight professions. Dragonflight professions have a lot more complexity than previous professions, and so Craft Sim works out all of that data for you. It's a very useful add-on for those profession crafters out there in Dragonflight. Roots is a fantastic add-on. I personally love this add-on and I use it a lot. Roots allows you to import specific roots out there on the internet and import it into your game. Once it's in there, once it's in there, it will show a route on your map for you to follow and basically find various herbs or and things like that. I have loads of roots on my Patreon that I tend to import and put into roots for my various viewers. Gathermate 2. Gathermate 2 is brilliant because it tracks every node in the world. Treasures, secret objects, or herbs, fishing, whatever it is, it tracks it all and it's really, really useful for gold makers. All the things. I love all the things. This is what I use to keep track of various pets, transmogs, mounts, and recipes, especially recipes. I love all the things for recipe farming. When I go into the old world, I'm trying to find a specific recipe. It will tell me exactly what boss or what dungeon or raid I need to complete to get that recipe. Last but not least is Loot Appraiser. Loot Appraiser is really, really useful because it keeps track of all the various items that you're farming in a nice little box for you to basically keep track of. So when you get something really worth some gold, it will very easily pop up and say, you've just made 20,000 gold from this item that you farmed. In conclusion, my friends, making gold in World of Warcraft Dragonflight has never been easier. It can be fun and a really rewarding experience. By following the tips and strategies listed in this video, you'll be well on your way to making wealth in World of Warcraft. If you found this video useful, do me a favor, guys, and just smash that like button, click subscribe. It really, really helps me and the channel just grow even more and allows me to bring awesome content to you just like this. Please consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to my awesome guides on Erosium TV, 
Dragonshield.com. If you want to get an awesome dragon t-shirt and support me at the same time, then check the link in the description where you can buy those awesome dragon t-shirts. Choose any color that you want. They're all there for you to buy right now. Thanks for watching. This is Erosium. Out.